What is up, peeps? We are back with another G World podcast, episode number three. We are surviving. We're doing it. We got a lot of big topics for today's stories. As per usual, each and every week on this podcast, we break down gaming stories, esports stories, streaming stories. Hunter, first and foremost, how are you doing today, lad? I'm doing good. I think we owe the audience a little bit of an apology. We did miss a week, uh, I'll say, because already? we were, yeah, already, episode three. <laughs> Uh, it's coming out a week late, but that is okay. We're trying to be consistent. We are out at an event, which we will recap at the end of the podcast. But hopefully, guys, and I'm going to put this out there, Jake, we're going to be sticking to these Thursday uploads, putting it out into the world so that people can get used to it. And, and that's the goal. Yep, our goal is each and every Thursday for you guys to come back. You guys have also been leaving some awesome comments and feedback. Apparently, a lot of you guys like this longer form where we shoot the crap on these stories. So keep sending us stories, and we appreciate all those comments. A few comments from last podcast episode that we usually do during the intro. Uh, this guy, Zizazo, says, Jake, you also play MOBAs, so what you said applies to you as well. I think that was a story where we talked about Shroud was going after MOBA players as like being the guys who peaked in high school and super nerdy. So that hurts. And then we have Dreams 7074 saying good content. Thank you, sir. So we, we appreciate those comments. And most of them were, were pretty positive, Hunter. So we kind of take those. Yeah, kind of a surprise. I do have a question and maybe you guys can comment this. We've been talking about the podcast in general, just recently had a conversation on it. And I'm curious if you guys preferred these kind of recap versions of podcasts. Do you guys want to see some guests? to bring on would you like to see us interview guests about themselves or talk about recent topics just like we are right now so just question for the comments yeah and let's just kick it off i think uh my personal favorite part is we get to just shoot the crap on all these big topics out there and this week was not short of any big topics i imagine we'll get some comments out there about this one as the dr disrespect versus z laner story it does continue. It was a big talk of the town last week as Doc had apparently teased maybe some streamers out there who are finally going to stream with him amidst just several weeks back, him admitting to, you know, probably one of the, the biggest dramas we've seen in the gaming space in a number of years. And so it was all still a bit fresh where he teased and actually said the name of someone like Zlaner and had a clip out there you know, get seen quite a bit of like maybe Z is gonna gonna join. We're gonna be dripping in heat again and actually playing together despite everything Doc just admitted to. And then Z Laner actually responded lengthily on stream for six to seven minutes where he talked about uh, at length several reasons as to why that will not be happening in the near future. And and for me, the the hardest part about Z's response is you could hear how much like he was hurt by all of this, like. A lot of us are kind of outsiders looking in, not directly connected to Doc. Z, obviously a different story as they were duos for quite some time. Doc certainly played a hand in his growth and they certainly enjoyed playing together for years and years. So overall, it was kind of just, um, it was sucky to see, but something that had to be covered and talked about and has continued uh, into today, which we'll keep on elaborating on because after you give your two cents, Hunter, we have a another response from Doc. Yeah, I think it's, we've talked about this a number of times. I imagine the audience can be a little bit tired of it, but hearing more and more details come out from people and seeing people like Z Laner speak about it again uh, is worth covering, in my opinion, especially Z, because he's someone who obviously had a brand built up with Dr. Disrespect, and he goes in at length saying, hey, this is going to be brought up for me every time I stream now, and it's not even my yeah. thing. He emphasizes that a lot. Like, this isn't my situation but I have to talk about it all the time and I'm always asked about it because of how close they were. And I agree, I think it seems like Z Laner obviously is more torn up about this than other people, I would say. It seems like he was closer to Doc, especially as someone who looked up to Doc to disrespect. He even says directly, hey, I respect this man a lot. Like I have always respected him and outside of this situation and these things, I do respect him. And I think he has a level-headed take uh, as far as like, saying i i hope this isn't something that happens again i hope this we never have to hear about anything like this like he's very much emphasizes i think people can change but this just happened like this is still very new and very fresh and has to be pretty detrimental and emotional for someone like z again who looked up to this man and who dr disrespect treated very well as a friend and so it's someone he respects someone that he treated as a friend, both of them mutually had that relationship. And now suddenly in front of millions of people, there's this massive drama surrounding Doc and it's gotta be difficult to deal with. Yeah, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the discussion of Tim 
Uh, people like Nick Merckx also not playing with Doc. It was a, a frequent discussion of, you know, Doc fans calling them not real friends for separating or parting ways with streaming with Doc. And we've already seen those lengthy responses from people like Tim and Nick, but especially someone like Z. I, I really felt for his response because I thought he explained it fairly well. You know, he was he was name dropped by Doc and maybe didn't expect that of like, whoa, 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 I I we don't know if they've been talking to each other behind the scenes or, um, you know, off offline. Uh, like if, if I'm Z and all of a sudden my name gets dropped by Doc, I'm like, what, what, what are we doing? Like, we didn't talk about this. And I don't know if they've actually spoken, but I did feel bad because I thought he explained himself very well. And to get the record straight, like, I don't blame anyone for not streaming with Doc, especially this close to such a big admission. You were asking that person to really throw themselves in front of a bus just to stream as your duo, uh, following something you admitted to that, again, like you said, is still so fresh. I think a really respectful thing that, that Z-Laner did as well, and I know we're going to get hate comments for this because people are going to support Doc no matter what and to each their own, make your own decisions, but we're going to get hate comments about this. But I think Z-Laner taking that approach, like one of the things that really stuck with me that he said was that Doc knew where he stood and hopefully understood the fact that Z was not trying to monetize off of this situation at all. He was not farming Doc and like as a friend and being very respectful to the situation. He really has not talked about it outside of that very first time. And so I think putting that foot forward, I appreciated a lot. And I was hoping that people would kind of see the authenticity behind that in that he, he doesn't want to make any money off. He doesn't want this situation to be happening. And he, yeah, he wasn't making, he wasn't making YouTube videos about this, right? Like he's not, he doesn't feel good about any of this. This is not a fun. He was thing addressing for him. his stream. Right. And so I, I think that was uh, a good thing that he did. And something that I at least appreciated. Um, but I, yeah, you can just tell it's hard for him across the board and talking about like, He's torn up like this is, again, man, he respected, but he's also going into a certain era of his life, like where he's engaged and trying to have a family and it just doesn't settle right with him still. And last thing I'll bring up uh, from this is when Zlaner says, and I still agree with it. I know so many people disagree with it for whatever reason, but the fact that Z says it's a no brainer. If people are calling you out for these things, if people are slandering you, quote unquote, uh, according to Doc, like making up stuff, just show the messages. Like it's a no brainer to just show them if it's something that's not that bad. And I think it's so hard for people like Z and myself included to really get over that because why wouldn't you just show them at this point if, it, if you're really being honest about the situation? Yeah, we, well, we don't know what ties there are legally to showing or not showing. And I, I would have the same stance, but I think we're past the point of even that being an option. Uh, the reason why we're talking about this yet again today, though, is because you have someone like Doc who is supposedly maybe now just called out Z. Now, I am making an assumption here based on the information we just told you guys all about, all happening in the last week or so. Uh, to recap, you had Doc name drop Z Laner as a potential duo stream in the future. You had Z address his stream one final time, six to seven minute rant saying, hey, that can't happen right now. I, I I simply can't, and I hope you guys can understand why, which I think plenty of people should. And then just within, I believe, a few days, we had Doc and this clip now being sent to me from several people being like, who is he talking about? As he doesn't name drop anyone, but he goes on to call out someone who was close to him, close to his family. He helped build up and grow and get networking connections that has kind of just disappeared out of their life as he refers to the, the Champions Club getting smaller and smaller. And then straight up calls this him, it is a him, that's all he names, uh, a pussy for not for not being there. And so I assume, and I would, I'm, I'm assuming correctly so here that he's referring to someone like Z, others maybe thought someone like Tim, but regardless, I'm kind of like really shocked by having him having this response or being this surprised that after what you admitted to, are you truly surprised that these streamers won't stream with you? Yeah, I think I'll be uh uncharacteristically optimistic here um maybe to the surprise of some of our viewers but if i look at this through rose tinted glasses let's say that like dr disrespect really 
And actually, I think I might believe this to begin with. Like, I think he's probably extremely hurt by the situation, too, that he dug the hole himself. Yes. But, like, let's assume the best and say this is a situation that happened years ago. Doc is a, an extremely changed man. He's kind of gone through this drama a little bit in a different way with the whole cheating on his wife stuff back in the day where people gave him a lot of heat. And this is from that same era of time. And so now all of this comes out. He's worked extremely hard, built up. A, a lot a extremely impressive career someone that we even respected a lot and like built a brand closely beside he brought in people like z laner he had a lot of friends like nick like he was at the top of the space in multiple different ways and so i have to imagine this is painful for him and his family as well a to have stuff like this aired out in front of people at millions like even z was saying this is a difficult situation and then b to lose all of these acquaintances and or friends or as he is now stating someone very close that he brought into his own personal like family real life circle also saying hey like just giving him quote unquote as he calls it the cold shoulder like that's not a good experience overall so i can understand that side of like being frustrated like this has to be one of the most frustrating things assuming he's a changed man um that he's going through but at the end of the day to me it's what you said how can you blame someone for for not like especially someone that's in the online space as as well if we're assuming it's zlaner like you can't blame someone like him for saying hey i can't really engage with this especially with the way doc has been treating some of it lately yeah, it's like, I mean, and I, 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 I'm assuming a Z, like just based on the past week of what went on and how he described it, that is my assumption. I don't, I don't know that for sure, but I, I think it would make sense, but it's a situation that Doc put himself in and now he's putting his streaming acquaintances in a very, very tough situation. What do you expect him to do? And so I guess I was hoping, I was hoping that after all this, his response would instead be, I understand why some of you know, some of these people are waiting and then he could be like, yeah, and I will give it the time necessary. But instead to go and just like go after him and, and call him a pussy for like not wanting to stream with you, like you want him to throw away their entire potential future streaming careers just to be your duo for a stream. Like I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like that's just not being fair to yeah. someone like Z if that, if that is who he's talking to in this case. Yeah. I do think he kind of leaned into though uh, in the video uh, a little bit like it seems like he's not as frustrated with that streaming side of it it seems like he's more frustrated with the personal aspect of it of like like the, he even says what like the online side is whatever it doesn't matter online is whatever it doesn't matter to me but the the personal side like the fact that he's given the cold shoulder and like I, I feel like maybe it's a more personal thing like he's like not even interacting with him and his family anymore when he says he's brought him into that family circle and that seems to be the frustration but i don't know but we also don't know he plays a character like z could be reaching out we i right i don't know that yeah i think there's a lot of question marks i think um at the end of the day like it still plays into the doc's audience for him to be upset with people who aren't playing with him uh or who aren't associating with him anymore we've seen a number of people say that they won't like Nick Merckx destroy Zlan or Lupo, you know, who have engaged with him before. But also people now, like we saw just today, this uh, playing with them that people are in his audience extremely excited about and like welcoming back into it and really supporting. And so I think it does play into kind of what Doc is leaning into these days. Yeah, we'll see what the future of someone like Doc is. Let's transition into our second story of the day, though. And we're going more IRL, but also something absolutely viral that happened in that space. Good old Jack Doherty. That I say Doherty, you say Doherty. It's all the same, man. Uh, kid goes viral again after driving his fancy car, I believe a McLaren, on the highway and uh, ends up crashing it where just, you know, uh, shortly before that, he was seen on his phone several times. So he was eventually... Uh, banned on, on a stream platform, that being Kick, It is a permanent ban for recklessly endangering lives. But he went viral for how he reacted to the entire situation. I do, I've never seen anything like this that has just made the internet so angry and rightfully so. It blows my mind that a kid like this can exist. And I mean, it's not surprising because it's the internet, but it's also like how the internet can produce something this bad is mind blowing. I don't it doesn't blow my mind at all honestly. Like I feel like there's more and more of these kind of kids popping up and this guy's been awful for a long time. That's not like we are well aware of all the different things that he's done and how he's just obsessed with this clip farming almost. Like it's just 
the state of the internet where people are doing more and more shocking things. And so, yeah, uh, I assume we'll probably show part of the video, but it's super frustrating just from like a human perspective to see someone dr being reckless, driving recklessly, being on their phone, and then they get in a wreck in the McLaren and all they're worried about is their camera angles and how they look and like, oh no, my car. And then at the end, then you go over to your friend who's in the seat or cameraman friend, whoever it is in the seat beside you. And he's like bleeding and you haven't worried you about gotta him. You got to point once. your camera and be like, are you good? Like, yeah, I think it's just, if you put yourself in that like, situation. Like what if he wasn't good by the way? Well, what if he was like, what if he was actually like, let's just, let's stretch it. What if he was dead? And the first thing you think about is recording it. Yeah. I, and we've seen, influencers in the past who have some people like to do that who have recorded things like that. some so, people like to do that uh it's again it's not a surprise in influencer culture where people are just trying to get the most shock value and most views and it's just this brain rot uh, of views i do want to read a couple we're just going to look at nate shot and nick's responses to this there was plenty of them um but just as far as people who we cover often uh nate shot said this guy deserves jail time starting off strong honestly couldn't believe what I watched when I made it to the end of this video. I'm not a fan of cancel culture. This kid needs to be demonetized from every platform imaginable at bare minimum. Nick Merck saying if there was an Olympics for garbage humans, this little dumbass would be Michael Phelps. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty good. That's actually a good line out of Nick. I'm not going to lie. It has 141,000 likes. So uh, checks out that it's a good line. I mean, obviously, and then like the next day he went live on Instagram to try to get like donations or something. So it, it's just garbage all around. Um, a kick a little frustrating because they act like this isn't their, like they ban him and they've confirmed that it's a permanent ban. But to me, I feel like it's a little frustrating because they just enable this type of behavior because they keep doing it like he's trying to get in fights with like he's doing he has bad behavior and there's plenty of people on the platform who are doing this where it's just going to get worse and worse until bad things happen so i feel like this is a little bit of their fault too yeah uh certainly platforms all take part in this uh kick uh, a newer one that is uh, unfortunately been established as kind of making these sort of headlines, whether they like it or not. And Jack has been a pretty prominent figure on that platform for some time. So it, it does suck, but all we've been told that it will be a permanent ban beyond that though, it, for anyone who wants more context, like after doing all of this and recklessly endangering lives, like God knows how this could have gone. This could have killed someone. This could have killed his friend. This could have killed Jack, which I, I won't make any jokes. There's been jokes already said uh, about, um, Jack's life. But so far, uh, it was shortly after that he went to Instagram first because he was banned on the, on the streaming platform. He went to his Instagram to, instead of, uh, you know, apologizing, he, he pleaded uh, for some pity from the crowd by showing the, the aftermath and then promoting his OnlyFans and the OnlyFans of the people around him. That was his, that was his first thought was like, I'm going to use this controversy to then go push OnlyFans on Instagram. And then like you said, a day later, he went live on TikTok asking for donations. Can you imagine being a parent and seeing this headline and then you check a, a bank statement, all of a sudden you find out your son or daughter had donated to Jack Doherty after all of this? Cause you know, you know there were kids that did it. You know, there were plenty of kids who were like, yeah, I want to support this guy. Yeah, he's, he's the best clip king of all time. So it's like a crazy string of events. And for me, it's like, where are the parents, dude? Where are the family members? Where is anyone around this kid? Like whoever his, is his manager has failed him completely. His family has failed him completely. I don't know what they, how they play a part in this, but that was the craziest thing I saw all weekend, man. And a lot of the, the flack and backlash he got is certainly justified. It's it, it, he needs help. Yeah. I think ultimately just a lesson. Also, it wasn't even his McLaren I saw, right? Um, oh, so nice. Don't even know why he's asking for donations, but ultimately to me, and maybe this is just dad brain these days talking, but it's just a reminder to like, watch who your kids are watching at this point, because yeah, you got to be careful who they're inspired by. And there's plenty of 100%. people just like Jack on the internet. And they're again, like we said, there have been for years. You know, the Paul brothers were not great. They weren't this bad, but they weren't great back in the day. So I'd say just watch who your kids are watching because of this is who is inspiring them. Um, then uh, you might have a problem on your hands. Those are good words of advice, man. We also had something that you're probably going to be pretty excited about this past weekend just to talk about. But Halo Worlds happened. We were not there, unfortunately. But there was some drama. Once again, Optic Gaming losing in the finals, which at this point, I am absolutely not surprised about. 
Another second place finish for Optic Gaming. If you guys follow Halo, we finally got some good news. This is a dual part story because not only is Halo switching to a new engine, but firstly, there was some drama. If you guys follow Halo esports scene, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys don't, but it's, it's, a, it's a juicy rivalry between Space Station and Optic. There's been some reset drama where Space Station has been accused and I, I don't think I mean, they're the best team in Halo. Uh, they're the best team in the HCS. So there was some drama previous events where they would use a reset feature to to uh, reset matches based off plugging in and out of controller. And it was some big some big debates because it was against Optic Gaming. Ultimately, when it comes to any series this year, Space Station has had the upper hand. I do think they're the better team, but it came down to actually a potential broadcast or I don't know what the issue was, but in the grand finals, uh, so Halo works on a bracket reset. So Optic comes from uh, the lower bracket and Space Station the upper bracket, which means Optic has to beat them once to reset the series and then beat them again. So that's the advantage you get from being from the upper bracket like Space Station was. It was in that first series where Optic was up 3-0 they were one map went away from reset it, resetting to a new best of seven on that map four and on the broadcast you go back and play the vod they had i think it was a four or five oddball uh point lead which is is not tremendously a, a big lead by any means in oddball and halo but then after a reset the lead flipped and so that five four or five point lead all of a sudden was SSGs. And people were like, what, how is this even possible? You go back and you can see it. I don't know if it was like a broadcast error of like, maybe it was a, dis a display error of some sorts, but even someone like Skump has also responded to this and said, hey, at the end of the day, this five point swing did not decide this series. So even someone like Optic Skump was like, this was not the end all be all and probably did not affect your championship at all. But the fact that it happens, is kind of crazy. Like you don't see display errors like that very often in esports world championship grand finals. Yeah, I mean, what is the it, oddball limit? Is it eighty? Uh, oddball goes to a hundred, and you need two two round wins. So uh, each team will they'll, they'll hold the oddball for as long as possible. I thought it, I think pretty sure it's a hundred. Um, so overall, five points in oddball is is not usually going to be the difference maker, but it, it still is a difference. Yeah, I think it. I watched the scum clip as well, and. He kind of plays both sides a little bit, right? By saying it's unacceptable happening in the in the grand finals. But, oh, it is for sure. Uh, yeah, and like Optic fans are going to hold on to whatever Optic fans can here. Uh, but it's you know they're up three. Oh, they're going into the fourth match. It's twenty six to twenty one, and then there's a pause, and it comes back, and now it's twenty one to twenty six. SSG. I had a little acorn fall on a roof there, but SSG uh, comes back, ends up winning that, then wins the next three matches. So they win four matches in a row and take the whole yeah. thing. Any Optic fan is going to be upset by that. They're going to stick but, to that. And I would too, yeah. if I was an Optic, if I was a diehard <laughs> Optic fan, I would do the same thing. Right. Like that's like a, a classic, you're blowing the game ref type of situation uh, that you'd be heckling whoever's in charge about. And so yeah. I get it. I get the frustration. But I also think, like Scum said, it's not that big of a deal because they had so many chances uh, to win to begin with, and like they blew the next three matches. Uh, so I, I don't think that was the end-all be-all. Got to feel bad for Optic fans uh, here. But like you said, overall, Halo fans are had some, some hope to hold on to, right? Yeah, some huge freaking news. If you guys are listening to us or watching us, if you're a Halo Infinite fan or just a franchise fan of Halo, it is a huge re-embarking re of I don't know what they're going to do, but it's 343 Studios has now rebranded to Halo Studios and the future of all Halo titles will now be moving over to Unreal Engine 5 as they have now announced and it, it did pretty well for an announcement for Halo. We have not seen many Halo announcements with this traction, I would say since probably the teasing and release of Infinite uh, now several years back. So a lot of people speculating what this could mean for the future of the Halo franchise. How can they really change the recipe of Halo? And how can they, in modern day, make Halo great again? Because for a lot of people out there, Hunter included, not me, Halo Infinite was not great. Uh, I'm saying Hunter, Hunter thought it wasn't great, but I'm one of 4,000 people who thought it was actually really good. So how can they, in modern day, change Halo, uh, have an essence of what the new Halo is going to be, but still draw back to what Halo truly is? Listen, I thought it was good when it released, but then it stayed the same. It never changed. It never got sure any did, better. Sure did, because it's it, a great it, game. It, great it games get, don't need change. Nothing happened. It was just as, it, like, it stayed the same, and that means it got worse uh, because they were not updated. Like, it just wasn't good. They had that same battle pass for forever. It just wasn't interesting anymore. So that was the problem to begin with. I think 
it is interesting seeing them kind of take this rebrand approach because I feel like that's all they had left. Like that was the only option uh, to really like get people interested to again. Ditch the, to ditch the bad studio. Yeah, to say that they're not 343 anymore. Now they're, what is it? Halo Studios yeah. is what they're being called. Which makes um, a bit more sense, but. Yeah, agreed. P 343 left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. Uh, for multiple reasons and so i think the change is good i think the fact that so many games by the way are switching to ue5 is insane and um shout out epic because you guys are probably making a lot of money uh, as we all know but i mean we just saw it, it's crazy how this announcement was taken differently from the valorant one by the way because people were in my experience at least posting like on on short form not excited about valorant going to ue5 but people have been super excited about halo going to ue5 yeah i don't see much short form stuff i, I try and stay away but that's actually i didn't expect that but this announcement also i would say in, in, in my realm got a lot more hype which is a good sign because there's still people that want halo to be something i just feel like a lot of people don't know what they want it to be and i'll draw back to like i uh i had a few drinks to me but i was really thinking hard about this it's like Halo wants to change the recipe. They want to be something different, something futuristic, which is what they felt like when they first, when you, when you first saw Halo titles, you were like, whoa, this is sick. It's an FPS or a shooter that's alien based and just really cool weapons and really cool maps. And for the sign of the times, it was something new. How do you make that in 2025 onward? Cause we're not going to see a new game probably for a number of years. How do you make that game now, but still make it a Halo game? Yeah. I, I don't know, and sorry if I if I miss this. Did they talk at all about why they wanted to go to UE five? Um, I think they it, it makes it easier for them because instead of trying to run and maintain an engine alongside a studio, now they can just rely on the engine to be what it is, and hopefully, you know, now have their team solely based around making said game instead of doing both. Okay, my biggest when I first heard about it, and this is why I asked, I thought the most important change here or like the most important part of them switching to ue5 was the fact that this hopefully should open the door for even more like ugc stuff or uh people being able to make their own stuff similar to forge right i know forge was a thing but i think on unreal engine people have even more of an opportunity to build with unique tools in their engine already because we all know how successful ue5 is with that yeah, and I don't know if that's going to be a game changer. You know, when you think about a game like Fortnite, uh, I, I like the way that they do it. I don't know if many other games outside of Minecraft, Roblox, and Fortnite have really used that feature well of using uh, your community. I mean, I would say Valve games certainly have. I mean, we've seen it a oh, ton with community maps. With CS. That's a good, that's a yeah, good point. community maps. I think that's like going to be a really big aspect. That's a good point. That could be could be like central to Halo, right? Like, imagine people being able to go in and make community maps in halo whether it's movement maps like i have like a lot more expression in what they're doing i think that naturally fuels games these days and people are really hungry for it i mean shameless you know bringing up deadlock per usual but people are already making deadlock maps in cs2 SDK. but the thing so, like, is those are different crazy. games you know what i mean like deadlock is a new game uh when fortnite did it uh or when they first when they first started doing it they were still a relatively new game um and there's other examples uh but like these games have been around, I mean, obviously like Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite have been around a while, for a while now. But like when I see Halo, I'm like, I, I'm, I instantly question the limitations of what you can do with a game like Halo versus the other games we just mentioned. So I agree with you, like it could be a huge part, but man, that that's a whole different model and approach than they have had ever, you know? Yeah, I think that's what it needs though. And hopefully they've recognized that with this change. I mean, we saw people doing their, what is it, the Forge Falcons doing their own projects, trying to build yeah. BRs in, in Halo because the studio wouldn't. And that's the big question now. It's what could this lead to a new battle royale that everyone's wanted forever, but they've refused to do? Or is this just going to be par for the course? Same thing as always, just on a new engine now. Yeah, we, we await to see. Uh, but also moving into our drama of the week. We had some big stuff over in the Apex scene. We're touching everything today, man. Every scene out there as we go from Halo into Apex Legends, some of the biggest drama we saw with Imperial Hal versus Jen Burton. For all of you guys who maybe don't keep up with Apex Legends, uh, Hal was now accused of being the biggest snake of all time in Apex 
as ahead of ALGS champs, that's the world event for Apex Legends, it was Hal and his teammate Zero dropping their former teammate Jen Burton just, I believe, uh, five or six days ahead of roster lock, which is not too much notice. Uh, it was then Jen who luckily found a team with someone like It's Timmy and Designful, but if he hadn't have found that team, he maybe would not even have a team for the rest of this competitive season, thanks to Hal, as he called them out for giving him such short notice. And now it's been a real back and forth of like Hal trying to explain why he gave Jen short notice and Jen being like, you could have told me sooner. And it's kind of just a classic uh, esports debate of, you know, this kind of goes on in the business when it comes to roster changes with every team in every game. Yeah, I think there's, there's two trains of thought for me here. One being... Um, maybe just a lack of information where like I, I can't fully recall the the nuance of the roster moves like was like what it was in between how soon roster lock was uh, what the deal with the Falcons was and uh, what all Hal's role is but I have to imagine how wants to hold on to that Falcon stuff after leaving TSM and I think he's even commenting saying that he thought he was going to be the one to be kicked off of Falcons after their performance recently and so with the bag that he's getting my first thought is he's probably going to do whatever it takes to keep it uh, because <laughs> because we know that Falcons pays. Yeah, like we know, Dude, I would, especially in a, I'd get rid of a, you in an instant. In a competitive, if we were esports pros in a competitive landscape, yeah, you brought your homies over. Uh, but then as soon as, you know, stuff isn't going well and Falcons is like, hey, we're paying you a lot of money. And you're like, how good of friends are we? How good of yeah, friends like, are we? And you're not the one getting kicked, Tao, because we want to keep you as the face. Yeah. So make some changes. You know, you can't necessarily blame the guy for that. I think if there's an opportunity, like, it's just, again, what I said, we don't know the nuance to a lot of this stuff. We don't know the timing um, and, like, how soon he had to make a decision, what was brought up, or if this was just all him. And, like, suddenly he was like, nope, we're changing. Like, there's so much we don't know. Um, Luckily so for how? Luckily for how Jen found a team. I think this would be a much bigger deal if Jen never found a team. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. And and then my only other thing is what you already said. Like, this is so par for the course for esports to begin with that I don't know why people are surprised. Like, I guess it just sucks, obviously, right? Like, if you're Jin, you're going to say it sucks no matter what. But I think this is pretty normal across every esport in the scene. Roster swaps happen. Like, people get dropped, and it always Especially never a trio. fun. A trio, yeah, it, dude, that's a, that's a tough triangle. Because to, you know it takes it just two-on-one, you're done. Right. And it always sucks. And especially, I mean, I don't think they had a, a coach, right? So when you're in that situation and it's always going to be weird because the players are going to be deciding versus like, you know, in Valorant, if it's the coach deciding uh, or the manager deciding, it kind of takes away. It puts like a wall in between the players a little bit. So there's less bad feelings. But we, I mean, we see it everywhere. So, yes, we just talked about it in another episode uh, <sighs> with, uh, with, you know, like with different players. There's always some kind of drama. Someone talks about something and they're like, oh, well, they did this or they said this and they wanted me removed or dropped or whatever. So it, it always happens. But ultimately, what do you do? Because Hal was saying that, you know, he finds out that it's not going to be him being dropped. So, OK, it's, now it's Hal and Zero. They got to get rid of Jen. But the reason why they didn't tell him is because obviously if they can't get the deal to go through where they get it approved by their team Falcons and then the players they want are over on Moist Esports, they have to get the approved mm -hmm. buyouts from them. So they're not telling Jen because they're trying to finish the deal without him even knowing that it's going down, which no. again, it, it makes sense as a business, but like morally and friendship wise, you're like, dang, that's a cutthroat business to be in. Yeah, there's not really much of an option for them because like, I mean, I guess the option is just to tell them and if it doesn't go through, then you're just stuck on a team where one guy knows that he was not wanted. Uh, and that's just the risk you take, I guess, if you're going to be, quote unquote, a decent person in it. But uh, I mean, I guess a hard choice overall. Yeah. And our closing for all of you guys, we like to recap the events that we go to as well. And it was actually this past weekend, we went to good old DreamHack Atlanta. Yeah. And it, yeah, that's all. <laughs> and so there was tons of great stuff. If you guys don't know DreamHacks, I mean, I could name the countless esports that they actually have. They had a CS Challengers event. 
They had tabletop events. They had Collegiate, Valorant, Rocket League, Overwatch. They had other tournaments. They had Halo 2 throwback. They had Deadlock being played. They had a BYOC with more CS tourneys, more Deadlock tourneys. Um, and a bunch of other stuff that I haven't even named. So for us, it's just been so fun to work with DreamHack, to go to these things, have a lot of great interviews and a lot of great times. And I would say overall for an event like Hunter, brought the fam, brought the baby, pretty good. Yeah, I think you you missed probably the biggest event that was going on, which was the COD Mobile Championships. You didn't mention that, um, which was a, a million dollar world champs. Uh, obviously not big in terms of viewership, but a uh, pretty big deal in terms it of was like, the mobile scene. It was fun. Uh, the audience was small. I, I saw a lot of people say this viewership was smaller than the last couple as well. Uh, Our first entrance could... into mobile too, man. Yeah, it, it's cool to see. Uh, we saw a lot of crazy stuff like the guys playing on their pillows, people wiping screens mid-play. And so it's a, it's a crazy <laughs> scene where these guys are bringing back. I mean, I think the winners took, it was Team Elevate or just Elevate, who took uh, $400,000 home to the Philippines. Yeah for this and so it's really a i mean it's a massive scene just not western right now and i saw a lot of people talking about that online saying well they also don't put it at the time where you know like the asian scene is awake and so it's like a really bad viewing experience for people over there who are trying to watch it at 2 a.m and so i think viewership hurts but regardless i think the esport is awesome and there's a lot of passion there and these guys have been around for a while getting to see the families and like everyone investing into it is cool and it's i mean that's a big prize pool dude yeah and tons of families coming over from the philippines there was also travelers from all over the world that were even at dreamhack in general and so we got to sit down we talked to interviewed you know collegiate peeps some uefn peeps some deadlock and cs peeps and so it was really cool to see and get face to face with people who have you know ten thousand hours in a game and they want to give you like they've never said anything opinion wise to a camera or gotten the chance to and so it was really cool to see we also talked to a guy who had his own homemade op asimov for all you cs fans out there so all in all a great event it was also great to meet so many different people there a nice wide variety of people that were coming up throughout the weekend so it was it was super fun and it was really re-encouraging to always hear nice things at uh, atlanta events you know face to face i think my two favorite parts were probably uh the obviously the deadlock getting to see that was cool because like yep. We just haven't seen it in person. Deadlock like land, players. man. Yeah, I mean, it was only it was only two teams. They thought there was going to be three, but uh, it was a really last minute thing. And they got uh, a couple teams to compete for a thousand dollars. By the way, which meant if you signed up, your team won four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. So uh, pretty good for them. Cool to see in person and and getting to see people hyped about the game and just to talk people in real life, even if it's like it's such an early version of the game that's being changed constantly. That was awesome. And then obviously the college scene was very cool to see. It was the DreamHack Atlanta College Invitational, which I think had like a couple thousand dollars on the line. So nothing crazy, but it was like Valorant, Overwatch, and RLCS. Uh, not RLCS, just Rocket League being played. And that's awesome to see because we get to talk to these college students who are mind-blowingly on full rides to their colleges, uh, a lot of them, for video games and playing games. They get their housing, they get their their food covered, they get everything covered for them, and they just take classes and play video games. And that is insane to me. Yeah, an overall dope event, but that's going to do it for this episode of the G-World Podcast. We got great topics coming for the future. Make sure to keep on commenting what you guys want us to talk about. And aside from our travels as well, after Atlanta, we're going to Berlin, Germany up next uh, in just a few weeks for the Thunderpick World Championships over in Counter-Strike, which is going to be a fun one, and we'll have plenty of coverage there. And then we have some other surprises to end this year with some more international travel. So as always, we appreciate all of you guys being here, leaving comments and likes, and uh, it's really enjoyable for all of us, uh, me and Hunter, to do each and every week talking about stories from gaming, esports, and streaming.